adfreebeing.com slash offer to gain unlimited access to essential content and resources. That's the Adweek Pro subscription. Today we have Curaleaf CMO Jason White. Good Monday to you, Jason. I'm okay. I'm okay. But you have a lot going on. Um, you also uh, recently acquired um, the, and you expanded recently. Tell us about that. Um, that makes you one of the biggest um, providers of cannabis. Um, really the, 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 one of the largest companies in the Midwest in cannabis. And that really kind of completes what we've been working on, which was the uh, Cureleaf business, which is an East Coast based uh, health and wellness business, the Select brand, which was a West Coast uh, lifestyle brand. And now um, with the acquisition of Grassroots, it really kind of connects the dots across the nation, um, giving us uh, operations in 23 states. We just opened our 89th dispensary last week. We have 130 licenses and we essentially have become the, the largest cannabis company in the world. Wow. And I just want to ask our viewers, if you can hear me, just give me a thumbs up um, on the LinkedIn live. Um, Jason, I want to kind of take a big step back um, because yeah. you and I both know that there's a stigma around cannabis. Um, how do you explain it to folks? And on a scale of one to 10, where do you think the stigma level is, you know, when we talk about stigma around mental health or stigma around, um, you know, speaking out, where, where are we in that national conversation? Well, I think to understand the stigma, you have to look at the past and you have to look at the, the actual amount of time that um, cannabis has been criminalized and weaponized. And it really goes back a hundred years. It goes back to the twenties and I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the history lesson, but two phenomenal films that you can watch to just um, be smarter about this industry and, and, and about the, the war on drugs. Um, one is called Grass is Greener, um, produced by a good friend of mine, Fab Five Freddy, and the other, which I just saw yesterday at the American Black Film Festival, um, is a film called Public Enemy Number One. Two phenomenal films that really explain um, that this goes all the way back to the 20s and, and from an um, government standpoint, it really ramped up in the 60s with the war on drugs. And, you know, that has created um, a situation that, yeah, there's a stigma because we've had decades and decades of um, dogma around what is cannabis and, and, and its, its role in communities. And we have to change that. And we have to get people to understand that this plant has tremendous benefits and this industry can do tremendous good. There's already 250,000 employees in this industry expected to um, at almost $2 billion of, um, uh, to the economy this year. And, um, you know, I think, I believe that it's, it's an industry that people should think twice about and really consider having a career. And, and as a, as a user, as, as someone who consumes cannabis, you know, there's tremendous benefits that can be had by, by removing it out of the, the days of reefer and into the days of wellness and, and lifestyle. Yeah, you're talking about wellness and lifestyle, but as a lead marketer, is it important to more so focus on the medical benefits or what is that kind of um, creative conversation going on with you and your team to try to reverse the stigma and to um, have a, a bigger, more open conversation? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? So you, you're talking about um, leveraging the the brand, right? So. Yeah. In terms of um, marketing, are, do you focus more on the medical aspects, right? The healing benefits, or um, you know, do you try to change that kind of lifestyle branding um, awareness? Well, you know, I think about cannabis and, and marketing of cannabis a lot like my past, which is mostly global markets, because every state is essentially a country. You know, you've got different uh compliance you've got different regulations you've got a completely different state of the consumer a different state of understanding and and different usage so when you think of a market like california where it's so far ahead and it really is a a lifestyle conversation and it is you know legalized um for adult use um, that's one way to market and that's one way to position our brands and that's why we use the select brand, for example, on the, on the West Coast. When you look at the East Coast in markets like Florida, New Jersey, uh, Connecticut, I mean, these are still medical states. These are still um, 
uh, states where people are, are, are prescribed and, and they have medical cards and, and it's really about treating conditions and helping them, you know, with, with chronic pain and other conditions that they feel um, they can treat with cannabis. So different worlds. And I think that's what makes it, you know, such a, such a tough space to market because our goal is to really build national brands, to create brands that consumers can understand and trust and know long term. In order to do that, you have to think about what's fundamental and core to a brand like Select or a brand like Cureleaf, but then also how do you tailor that message into a market that is highly medical or highly adult use or like Arizona where you kind of have this blend. So it really is a state by state task, yet we're trying to use a national solution. Yeah, I really like that analogy of the states being like different countries. We're seeing a lot of, you know, division and conversations, a variety of conversations. Um, is that the same when you approach social justice conversations in, in various markets and franchises and demographics? Yeah, you know, um, we've seen uh, social equity have very degrees of, of implementation and very degrees of success based on the state. You know, right now, Illinois with probably the most progressive um, social equity platform. We'll see how that goes at that start as that starts to roll out. I think um, California has seen varying degrees of success. I think a lot of people would argue um, there's been a lot of hiccups in, in how that gets executed. And, and, and broadly, I think what you can see in the themes there are, um, while the intention has been very good, there's been some some problems in execution and uh, whether that's predatory loans, whether that's just not being able to have the capital to stand up a, a social equity license after obtaining a social equity license. These are common themes. And these are some of the things that, you know, as, as the largest cannabis company in the world, we're trying to, to think through how do we be a part of, of solving some of these problems, but how do we do it through the lens of business? You know, how do we help others stand up their businesses to grow all of our businesses. So it's, it's, it's a tough one. We have not solved this yet. And, you know, you've got state by state legislative uh, decisions that have to be made. Then you also have obviously the, the, the national legalization conversation. But for us, it's really more of a state by state conversation of how do we, how do we take part in both the, the legislative side, but also using business to help solve some of these problems. Yeah, let's go back to that toughness, because you're in a unique position as a CMO. Um, to be in a place that has to constantly be on the watch and constantly kind of um, pivot where you need to with the regulation. So how do you kind of, as a leader, um, stay on top of it all? Uh, you have a really great team. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we have a really strong government relations team that really is, you know, in the position of thought leadership. They have the chair of the Cannabis Trade Federation. And in addition to that, we have, you know, great leaders in, in our state roles. And it, it really does take um, a collection of efforts to think this through from, from the group that thinks about mergers and acquisitions to the group that's really thinking about how to execute in the market to the group that's thinking long term, not only in, in from, from a legislative standpoint, but a brand building standpoint, making decisions about retail, making decisions about, you know, where to plant your business next. It's all a puzzle and you know we meet as an executive leadership team every wednesday and we run through these decisions over and over and over um because on top of all that you've got to think about delivering for shareholders and delivering for our investors so it's it's really a, a fascinating business and a fascinating time like I, I i say like i pull on every aspect of my past i pull on you know global marketing i pull on product marketing i pull on cultural marketing and understanding the music space and the athletic space like everything i've done in my past really um has helped me be prepared for this and it's still a daunting daunting task yeah what would you say to marketers who are in you know a new kind of position or a new um playing field um i, I say new just kind of relative to you know how much more I think the cannabis space will grow um, in its way to becoming more mainstream. Well, it, it is. It's it's very you know, it's a nascent industry, and I, I think um, people have to really understand that we're figuring this out as we go. And on on one hand, we have the the absolute pleasure and privilege of looking at all these other industries that have come before us and, and learning from what worked and what didn't. But at the same time, you know, we have to have the patience and and the wherewithal to get through um, the mistakes, the hard work, the, the building of an industry, the standing up of an industry. And, um, you know, there are many folks that have come before us, and I don't, I don't 
claim to be the first in this space, but when you when you look collectively at the folks that are really trying to stand up these industries, whether it's the big multi-state organizations like MSOs, or um, whether it's those small, you know, mom and pop shops, it really is everyone trying to figure this out. And I think there are moments when we we work together, and there's moments where we work competitively. Um, and I think to those who are interested in this space, you know, it, it's not as daunting as it sounds. If you if you work in tech, you can work in tech and cannabis. If you work in brand marketing, you can work in brand marketing and cannabis. If you work in packaging, you can work in packaging and cannabis. It's it's a very viable industry, and it's 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 you know uh, almost becoming an attachment of consumer packaged goods. And we think a lot along those same lines, but it's also a a business that involves culture and that involves lifestyle that involves health and wellness so there's so many entry points so many on ramps as i always say onto the business and um you know we're very very proud of our growth and we're and we're um really loving to the the idea of continuing to grow we have over three thousand employees right now and again we continue to kind of expand our national footprint and and look for great uh folks that want to join us on this mission yeah, it sounds like there's going to be um, a, a lot of overlap in the year and the decade to come with cannabis. Yeah, I mean, I think this is, this is. I, I always say this is the first 21st century industry, and that's not any disrespect to any other industry. I just think that when you, when you look at what we have to build and you look at, um, you know, it really only being legal uh, essentially this this century, you know, in so many ways. Uh, obviously, there was medical cannabis in some states, but the real true birth of the industry is now, and that's not going to change over the next ten years. And and we we will get to national legalization at some point. We will get to decriminalization. We will get to um, the bigger national footprint. We will get to a global footprint. But for now, it's like you got to wake up every day and you got to do the work that's required today. You know, you've got to you know, keep defining retail, keep redefining retail, keep making great consumer products, keep pushing innovation, like build it step by step by step every single day. And then one day you kind of pick your head up and you realize you're at the 50 yard line, you're at the 30 yard line, you're at the 20 yard line. So that's, that's what we do every day. Yeah. And I can see that there's so much passion behind the pushing for you. I also want to ask you, you know, how do you prevent um burnout i I ask this because you know i I know how much passion um can fuel uh such great work but also um you know when you're at the 20 yard line and you're just trying to get to the end and um maybe you you know run out of gas every once in a while (laughs) (laughs) well it's certainly built for those that can kind of weather the storm this is not an easy industry it's very complex I think personally, um, you know, I think especially in in the time of COVID where, you know, everyone is available 24 seven because we're not going anywhere, you know, we're not traveling. Most of us are at home. I think, you know, you have to set the boundaries. I tend to start very early because of the East Coast time zone and my headquarters are on the East Coast. So I try to put an end on it at a a normal time um, to, to then kind of, you know, have a life in other areas. But but the fact of the matter is, and I was just telling my team this the other day, like there's a reason why you why you sign up for growth industries. It's the excitement, it's the passion, it's the success that you see. It's that curve, you know, that 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 is so exciting to be a part of. And and with that comes hard work. There's no denying it. So uh, it's it's not for everybody, um, but it is an industry that I've really really enjoyed, and and I've seen just met some of the most passionate people. And and you know when it is so personal for so many, you know, when you see people who have their own story of a loved one who maybe in late stages of a disease, cannabis was helpful to them, or maybe it helps with their anxiety, or maybe they just have a passion for the plant and the passion for um, treating conditions in ways other than, you know, over-the-counter medicine. There's so many people that that have their own personal story for being in the space. And that really changes things. That's when the hard work isn't hard work. The hard work is your life's pursuit. It's your it's your purpose. So we, we tend to um, try to find those people and we tend to help everyone find their purpose in this work because I think it is purposeful work. And and I think that kind of accounts for some of the, the hours and makes, makes the work worth it. Yeah, I love that. Kimberly G says, yes, I hear that. Not for the faint of heart. Um, Jason, I want to ask you a last question of, you know, what should we as marketers look forward to um, in, in the year to come, whether it's, you know, in the cannabis space or 
um, in the marketing world? Well, I think um, I'm excited for for the innovation that we've got coming. Um, we've had a couple of firsts already. We just launched the select brand in Florida. We've just rolled out a, uh, a chewable product in, in, in Florida and a uh, sublingual tablet it's called. And, you know, we continue to try to innovate and just think about the consumer and think about, you know, what are the, what are the needs and what are the moods of the consumer that we can affect? So, you know, as people want more options, you know, things that are not smokable or things that work in a very specific time frame, like we have a, technology called nano we're rolling out where you can take a gummy and everyone has had that scary gummy experience but this is one that's you know starts on time and, and works um, in a more consistent way through your body so we're really working on product innovation how do we develop great consumer products like any other industry in CPG you know it really comes from from innovation and from understanding and explaining to a consumer what we're putting in the marketplace. So that's what I'm really excited about. Definitely innovation. The other side of that is just continuing to put brands out in the world that people can can know and trust and really understand like all of the other brands in their lives. You know, this is really a time of normalization. It's a time of uh, of bringing so many practices that we've seen from uh, these other industries we've all come from and just applying them in cannabis and, and bringing it into the forefront, taking it out of the shadows. And, and hopefully consumers will will appreciate that and, and start to realize these are great options uh, for their lives. Yeah, well, it's definitely a time when we are uncertain, but we need great leadership. Uh, we need help, we need all the help that we can get. And we're seeing a lot of really, really cool innovation. So Jason White, CMO of Curaleaf, thank you for spending some time with us this Monday. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. And thank you to all of our LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, everywhere audience for tuning in. If you would like to see this series continue, if you want to give us a little applause or whatever icon that you want, just let us know. We are listening. And feel free to start an Adweek Pro subscription and get gain unlimited access to our essential content and resources. You can learn more at adweek.com slash offer. My name is Ko Im. Have a great week.